Chapter 5. Lily had been wandering around all of yesterday and today trying to get another look at Albert. She wore the sailor hat Eddie Dillon had given her last summer, her sunglasses and a thick layer of victory red lipstick from Gert's department store, free take one. Albert wouldn't recognize her in a hundred years. It didn't make any difference. Once she thought she saw him climbing around on the rock jetties at the beach and once on Cross Bay Boulevard. But both times he was gone by the time she got close enough for a good look. Right now it was Friday afternoon late and Poppy was finally coming for a weekend. In the rowboat, Lily dipped the oars into the water as quietly as she could. Any minute, Graham would be after her to practice the piano. It tooed in something or other, set the table for dinner, and who knew what else? Lily, too late. Above her, the screen door opened. Lily began to row singing, Morrow's Dotes, pretending she didn't hear. Graham wasn't fool. fooled. You could set the table, Lily, she called. Get everything ready before your father comes. Going to pick him up in the boat right now, Lily said over her shoulder. Then he won't have to walk around the long way. And what about the piano? Graham was in love with that piano. Did you practice? Graham began. This morning, she hadn't bothered much with the etude. She'd done the C scale twice, two minutes, and that was that. She began to sing, a kiddly divi too, listening for the sound of the door, but it didn't close. Graham was still standing there waiting for her to turn around and come back. Lily raised the oars, water plinking off the ends, but Graham didn't say anything. Going to get Poppy, she said again. And back of her, the screen door closed. Lily dipped the oars into the water again, veering toward the railway station, hurrying now, anxious to see him. The railroad trestle looped across the bay, flat against the water. Lily bent over the oars, wondering what Poppy would tell her about on the way back. Probably how hot it was in St. Albans and how much he missed her. She smiled to herself, thinking about it. She saw the smoke from the engine before she spotted the train. A moment later, it pulled into the station, and a knot of people piled out the doors, and there was her father waving his newspaper at her. She waved back, rowing fast toward the dock, watching the distance narrow, angling around another boat that was coming in to meet the train. Then finally, she rammed into the rough wood of the piling. She held the boat steady, stroking until Poppy untied his shoes, pulled them off, and hopped in. Want to row? She asked, leaning across for a kiss. He shook his head, smiling, the lines around his eyes crinkling. She reached out to touch them with her fingers. Go the long way, he said, around the trestle. She knew Graham was waiting, broiling flounder, using the last dot of butter for little round potatoes, but she was happy to be there with him. She didn't say anything. She dipped the oars into the water, pulling slowly, evenly, watching him. He tipped his hat back and closed his eyes. This is my favorite place, he said. It's home, even though it's only for the summer. Lily nodded. Tomorrow they line up at the deep sea fishing dock to climb aboard the Marielle before the sun came up. They'd fish all day, the boat smelling of kerosene and heat. Tomorrow night, she and Poppy would walk to the Cross Bay Theater. He loved the movies too. It would be her fourth time for Fair Stood the Wind for France, first time paying. Then on Sunday after Mass, they'd read, Finish Evangeline, or I have to tell you. Poppy's eyes were open now, blue with paler flecks of gray, his face suddenly serious. The Dillons left for Detroit, she said quickly. Mr. Dillon's going to be a foreman in a factory in charge of making planes. Top secret, Margaret says. Poppy grinned. It won't be a secret for long, not if Margaret knows about it. Lily swallowed, watching him smile. He reached out, put his hand on the oars. I have to go, too. I came to tell you. She didn't look at him. To a factory like the Dillons? When would he leave? She looked out across the water, seeing him shake his head from the corner of her eye. The army needs engineers, Poppy said. For a moment, she felt as if she couldn't breathe. Who's going to take care of me? Graham, he said. Graham, of course. Graham? She closed her mouth over the word, didn't want to hear it. She and Graham all alone in St. Albans this winter, the wind rattling around the house. Please, she said, but she didn't even know if she had said it aloud. Poppy put his hand over hers. Listen. People are getting in trouble just for being Jewish. I'm sick of the war, she said. It's going to be over someday, he said, now that the Allies have landed in France. She shook her head. It'll take forever. Poppy sighed. There's been nothing but destruction and war. Families separated, villages ruined, cathedrals ruined. She opened her mouth trying to think of something to say, something that would change his mind. But right behind the armies will be people like me, he said, the engineers, the builders. We're the ones who will put Europe back together again. Where will you go when? He shook his head. It could be anywhere, England, maybe, or Germany. 
I won't even know where you are. Yes, she will, he said. Lily shook her head. Mrs. Colgan doesn't know where her brother is. She said the censors cross everything out in the letters. She can't even guess the country. Poppy squeezed her hand. That's true, but I promise I'll find a way to let you know somehow. Graham was calling now. She could hear her voice across the water. Jerry, Lily, hurry. I love you, Lily, Poppy said. I love you more than Rockaway, more than anything. Lily edged the boat toward the dock. Graham was outside, her hand cupped over her eyes, watching for them. What will Graham say, Lily asked. She won't like it. She'll hate it. I know she will. Poppy moved his hand, held it over Lily's wrist on the oar. Graham knows. Lily stared at him. You told Graham first? You knew about it? Both of you keeping a secret? Not telling me? She shook his hand off her wrist, feeling tears hot in her eyes, a terrible burning in her throat, feeling angry enough to burst. She hated him, hated Graham. She started to row. Lily, her father began, then stopped. She nosed the boat in under the porch, banging hard into the piling. She must have chipped a, chipped a paint off the boat in a couple places. She didn't care. didn't care about one thing. Poppy reached out to help her up, but she pulled away from him. Graham was standing at the edge of the ramp that led to the kitchen, smiling a little, looking anxious at the same time. You told her? I thought you were going to wait until after. Mind your business, Lily said, and said it again. The words came out of her mouth so fast they ran together. Then she ran up the path away from the house. She wanted to go back to the water, but she'd have to pass them. Instead, she went along the road, running on the tar, which was gluey from today's sun. She saw Albert and veered away from him because she knew he had seen her too. He was standing in front of the Orban's house, watching her cry.